In Thebes, Dionysus was opposed by Pentheus, his cousin, who was torn to pieces by the Bacchants when he attempted to spy on their activities. Athenians were punished with impotence for dishonoring the gods' cult, their husband's resistance notwithstanding. Women took to the hills wearing fawn skins and crowns of ivy and shouting the ritual cry, Iwa, forming holy bands and waving the thrysoi, fennel wands bound with grapevine and tipped with ivy with a pine cone on top. They danced by torchlight to the rhythm of the alos, the double pipe, and the handheld drum. While they were under the gods' inspiration, the Bacchants were believed to possess occult powers and the ability to charm snakes and suckle animals, as well as supernatural strength that enabled them to tear living victims to pieces before indulging in a ritual feast. The Bacchants hailed the god by his titles of Bromios, Thunderer, Bullhorned, Bullfaced, in the belief that he incarnated the sacrificial beast. Aristophanes wrote Frogs in the 5th century BCE, narrating the story of Dionysus, who he calls Iacchus, descent in return from Hades to resurrect the dead. The plot unfolds with Dionysus disguised as Heracles, alongside his servant Xanthius, riding a donkey to visit Heracles. Dionysus' attire amusingly surprises Heracles. Dionysus inquires, about the route to the underworld to bring back the poet Euripides to Athens and the potential challenges they might face. After receiving guidance from Heracles, the duo embark on their journey. Dionysus is conveyed across the lake by Charon, while Xanthius, being a slave, has to circumvent it. Frogs serenade them during their journey, initially irking, but eventually amusing Dionysus who partakes in their jubilant melodies. Brekkekekekek, coax, coax, brekkekekekek, coax. Dionysus engages in a mocking debate with the frogs. Dionysus and Xanthius confront the creature Empusa, terrifying Dionysus. Soon the chorus of initiates sing hymns to Iacchus, Demeter, and Persephone. Upon reaching Pluto's abode, their arrival is met with hostility. Due to Dionysus' disguise as Heracles, the confusion over their identities and subsequent interactions bring comedic elements into the play. Come, arise from sleep awaking. Come, the fiery torches shaking. O Iacos, O Iacos, morning star that shinest nightly. Lo, the mead is blazing brightly. Age, forest, its years and sadness. Aged knees curve it for gladness. Lift thy flashing torches o'er us. Marshal all thy blameless train. Lead, O oh lead the way before us. Lead the lovely, youthful chorus. Inside, the contention between Aeschylus and Euripides over poetic supremacy unfolds, with Dionysus as the adjudicator. A series of debates and competitions reveal their differing poetic styles and philosophies, with Euripides presenting his work as more modern and relatable, while Aeschylus defends the grandeur and depth of his compositions. Unable to decide, Dionysus resorts to weighing their verses, leading to Aeschylus' victory due to the profound themes in his work. Subsequently, reflections on political figure Alcibiades are solicited from both poets. Eventually, Aeschylus is declared the ultimate victor, and the group retires for a feast. Aeschylus leaves his esteemed seat to Socrates upon his departure to the mortal realm, ending with accolades to Aeschylus and hopes for his wise counsel to Athens. Dionysus ascends back from Hades and successfully resurrects the dead poet. This comedy was known by many to be an allegory of the ancient Eleusinian mysteries. These mysteries were practiced by hierophants who held secret initiation ceremonies. The purpose of initiation 
was to gain salvation and eternal life from participating in the rites of Dionysus and Demeter, who represent the vine and grain. A holy Eucharist was involved. The wine was the spirit of Dionysus, and the bread was the spirit of Demeter, the goddess who Zeus fell in love with, whose daughter, Persephone, was abducted by Pluto in the secret hymns. Adherence to Dionysus, counted among the entities symbolizing fecundity, including the satyrs and Selenoi, the phallus held significant prominence in his ceremonies. Dionysus frequently assumed a wild animalistic form and found association with diverse fauna. His distinctive symbols included a wreath of ivy, the thrysis, and the cantharus, a sizable goblet with two handles. Early Greek representations depict him as a man with a beard, but subsequent portrayals showed him as a young and delicate in appearance. Scenes of Bacchic festivities were a prevalent theme for those who painted on vases. The Eleusinian Mysteries stood as the most renowned among the Dionysian spiritual practices throughout global history. Every year, initiates gathered for rituals dedicated to Demeter and Persephone at the famed Eleusis Sanctuary in ancient Greece. These rites, often described as ancient Greece's most celebrated secret religious practices, rooted in an age-old farming tradition that are indications that they evolved from ceremonies of the Bronze Age Mycenaean era. The rituals echoed the narrative of Persephone's capture by Hades, the underworld king, and detailed three primary stages, the descent, the pursuit, and the rise, culminating in Persephone's reunion with Demeter. This celebration was a central event in the Hellenistic period and later found its way to Rome. Parallel ceremonies are evident in Near East agricultural communities and Minoan Crete. Throughout history, the specifics of these ceremonies rites and doctrines were guarded and meticulously upheld. For those who were initiated, Persephone's rebirth symbolized the unending cycle of life passed down across generations, and they held the conviction of receiving blessings in the afterlife. Artistic representations of the mysteries, such as paintings and pottery, are abundant. Given that the mysteries showcase visions of the afterlife and that their enduring appeal and continuation of practices across 2,000 years are influenced by psychedelic substances. The town's name, Eleusis, appears to have a non-Greek origins and possibly correlates with Elysium and the deity Elithuae. The ceremonies were conducted biannually. The lesser mysteries were observed during the spring, while those who had undergone prior purification participated in the greater mysteries come September. Devotees journeyed the sacred path from Athens to Eleusis, invoking the Cori, the Virgin, and reenacting Demeter's quest for her abducted daughter. Upon arriving at Eleusis, participants paused near the same well where Demeter had once rested, observed a fast, and then consumed a drink made from barley and mint known as kaikion. This concoction contained a hallucinogenic fungus, ergot, enhancing the overall mystical experience. Post-consumption, attendees made their way into the Telesterion, a subterranean chamber to witness the confidential ceremony. It's widely believed that this rite symbolically reenacted Dionysus' death and subsequent resurrection, with spectators possibly playing a role. The initiates were to symbolically die by drinking the kaikion, the hallucinogenic drink, and become resurrected through the god taking over their body and making them holy. A Eucharist was involved, followed by the orgiastic revelry. Then, a phallus of Dionysus was brought out. Initiates 
would then take the phallus from the chest and repeat these words. I have fasted. I have drunk the cup. I have received from the box. Having done, I put it in the basket and out of the basket into the chest. This would go down until dawn. <laughs> 